I spent the beginning of my career pretty convinced that the only appropriate business values were things like quality and a commitment to excellence. <laughs> and while those values are absolutely appropriate and valid business values, I have discovered that having fun is not just a personal value of mine, but an emerging business value that is not to be ignored. Let's back up a little bit. I grew up as a stage kid. I grew up in theater, doing school plays, in church choir, playing in the marching band. And part of those experiences was taking fun seriously. The more I could have fun on stage, the more I could help my audience members have fun as well. I took that fun very seriously. I, I liked to keep my figure in shape. I was a rotund young woman, so I was often playing some crazy old woman or maybe an animal, and I took that seriously. My favorite lunch was not just SpaghettiOs, but two cans, Mom. Can I get two cans of SpaghettiOs for lunch today? Thank you. I'm playing Sour Kangaroo in Susical the Musical, and I would like to embody the part in all ways, shapes, and forms. <laughs> And I loved that life. I, I enjoyed sharing that excitement and having fun on stage and having that be my commitment to excellence, is having fun and making jokes both on stage and off, always trying to play games with people or make a game out of what we were doing. And it served me well for my childhood. And then I got to college where the prospect of making a living became a little more real. And I was not sure that having fun was quite going to cut it. So I decided to get seriously serious and find a career path where I could be guaranteed some level of income, and I established writing as my major. I, I pursued professional writing, so not so much poetry and, and creative writing, but more so journalism or professional writing like technical writing or public relations, and I graduated with a degree in professional writing, graduated right into a recession, but I was able to land a job as a technical writer pretty soon after college with an automation company. Success! I had a full-time job in my field of study with benefits, however I accessed those, and, and with, with a 401k, whatever that was, but I knew people had them, so I should probably get one. And I felt pretty good about having arrived at my first big kid job where I was making money every day and I could afford as many SpaghettiOs as I wanted. And even though I had arrived at this existence that I had shot for for a very long time, I was miserable. The reality of being a technical writer in my job was that I came into a project at the very tail end of it when everybody was stressed out. Everybody's crazy and nobody has time for everybody, especially not a young lady coming up to him with a clipboard asking him questions like, how do you turn this bad boy on? <laughs> or, Hey, I see this error message. What, what, what do you got to do to resolve this? Ah, oh, sweetheart, I do not have half a day to explain this to you. So my existence was very much being ignored and disregarded. There was, one, there was one subject matter I worked with, subject matter expert I worked with, who literally ran from me across the shop floor. I saw him, I saw him hiding from me across, across the shop floor. And one engineer that I worked with he was the very first engineer that company had hired of that kind. And I walked up to him, very new in my role, and said, hey, you know, good morning, how you doing? And he didn't even look up from his computer. He just said, I was fine until you got here. <laughs> Ouch. You know, I have part of the reason I did not pursue performance is because I didn't have quite the thick skin it takes to deal with all that rejection of auditioning and not getting those roles. So I was supposed to be in a safe place where I'm making money and feel good about making that money, but I was not feeling good. I was feeling very rejected, and I wasn't supposed to feel that way in my first big kid job. And this went on for months before I decided this is clearly not for me. It is time to get a new job. So I started looking for different jobs, and... While I was looking for different jobs, I very much relaxed about the first job. I started loosening up, making jokes with my coworkers, and even going out for lunch and out to have some beers with my coworkers, and just really not worrying about the, the formality and the professionalism of being the best at technical writing that I could be. I, for a time, I was out to be the best technical writer and write the best operation manuals that anybody has ever thrown away. But I loosened up after I started looking for other jobs, and 
And through making jokes and having fun with my coworkers, something amazing happened. They didn't ignore me quite as hard. They stopped running. They might, they might make a little start, but they weren't running. And they started reaching out to me for help with things. And so I discovered, based on my own personal experience, that, hey, loosening up and having some fun is a way to make my work life better, make other people's work life a little bit better. It drew people to interacting with me, even if those interactions were centered around the work, which might not have been so fun. And so, in addition to this personal discovery, researchers around the world have also been proving that having fun is a key element to unlocking productivity, creativity, and a sense of community. And when you take a look at what the word fun actually means, it means amusement, lighthearted pleasure, or finding enjoyment in something. And through fun, you really can, despite those words not really seeming like they apply to the business world, there is a lot of power that having fun can carry towards productivity and your organization's success. So I've developed a model for workplace fun that categorizes having fun at work into three types of fun. The first one is organic fun, the second one is organized fun, and the third type of fun is functional fun. Now, the first type of fun, organic fun, is very much just someone's ability to feel safe saying what they think, free to be who they are, free to make mistakes, free to be human. And if that sounds at all like psychological safety, where people feel free to say what they think and express themselves, it's because it is. Psychological safety is very much the basis on which organic fun can be had. Organic fun just means that you feel, you feel comfortable enough with your coworkers to make a joke or go out to lunch with them or just be yourself around them. These are interactions that no one's telling you to have. They're interactions that you choose because it's gonna make you feel more human and more comfortable. And organic fun is important to a productive workplace. Research from the Harvard Business Review and Gallup has shown that workplaces with high levels of psychological safety promote 76% higher engagement levels, 74% lower levels of stress, and 50% higher levels of productivity. This proves that when you just let people be who they are and make them feel safe being who they are, that there's additional potential to be unlocked. Now, when I started having some organic fun at my first big kid job there, it really did take me from crying at my desk most days because I felt so terrible to feeling like, okay, yeah, I could stick this out. I can make it a full year. I can do this. I can do hard things. <laughs> so that's a little bit about organic fun. And the ways that you can foster organic fun at your workplace are very simple. Listen. Ask questions and listen to those responses, especially if they provide a different perspective than the one you already have. Be grateful when someone shares knowledge, information, or an experience that's different than yours, and express appreciation for that. The other thing you can do to foster organic fun is to go beyond the workplace. Get to know people outside of the job you're doing. And the third way you can foster organic fun at your workplace is to be vulnerable and allow others to be vulnerable with you. Be honest and open about the mistakes you make and make it feel okay for others to make mistakes. If you make a mistake, if possible, have a little humor about it. And when others make mistakes, react with curiosity and support rather than frustration and judgment. Organic fun, it goes a very long way. And it can go even further when you add organized fun. What I mean by organized fun is activities and events that your organization may put together with the express purpose of developing relationships between people on your team or maybe between people and the organization itself. Organized fun is another really strong contributor to workplace productivity. Research from Cambridge University 
examined the relationship between having fun at work and three organizational productivity measures, including task performance, creativity performance, and organizational citizenship behavior. Blah. Or being a good teammate, let's call it that. <laughs> and their strongest finding was that having fun at work had a direct and positive relationship to the organizational citizenship behavior. Or, in other words, having fun at work makes you a better teammate. When you have fun at work, you are more relaxed. You are more likely to also care about the people and things around you. You're more likely to go the extra mile for them or look out for them in times of need. And a lot of organizations already do a great job at organized fun. They hold events where people can get to know each other. They do giveaways and give away shirts and jackets with the company logo. And those are great places to start if your organization isn't already doing something like that. And if you are, there are lots of ways to go further. Look for ways to connect your organized fun to your organization's mission. Does your company have a lot of problem solvers? And can you do events where people come together or maybe compete to solve a problem? Or do you have something new worth sharing, worth promoting, that you want everybody on the team to be aware of, understand fully, and share with their own networks? Can you involve people in promoting those things? Or can you make things as simple as giving people choice if you do a company event, don't make it mandatory. There are few things that will make something seem less fun than making it mandatory. <laughs> so it's very simple to make your organized fun effective. Connect it to your organization's mission and let people feel human around those events. I got involved in some organized fun at that first big kid job. I got to participate in the fundraising committee and organize events on that level. And then I got to even plan some company picnics where I learned where we could and maybe should be strategic about those events. And those kinds of responsibilities kept me at that big kid job for not just that first year, but a few years beyond that. And the third type of workplace fun I'd like to talk about is functional fun. And this is when people find joy in the work that they are doing. Functional fun may also sound a lot like finding flow, where you lose track of time because you're so immersed in what you're doing. And that very much is the basis of functional fun as well. When you are truly finding that enjoyment, remember the definition of fun is enjoyment as well, when you find enjoyment in the actual job tasks at hand. Forbes did a study that proved companies with higher employee engagement levels experience profit levels that are up to 21% higher than companies that have low levels of engagement. That's a pretty hard, fast, great number for something as soft as enjoying what you do, right? And lucky for us, there are tons of tools available for finding out how people can find joy in the work that they do that are based on their own unique value systems. Some people are really motivated by being part of something bigger, supporting a larger cause. Some people are really motivated by accuracy, precision, problem solving, getting it right. Some people are just motivated by winning or making friends, making some connections. And whatever the case, there's likely an element of someone's job res responsibilities that ties into that personal motivator, if you look closely enough. And if it's not in the job description, Look for ways to conscientiously and deliberately help that person stretch beyond their job role in a way that is meaningful for them and beneficial for the organization. Do you have somebody on your team who is super outgoing, maybe not on the marketing team, but a great candidate for going to a trade show or being part of a networking event where they can use those relational skills to further your organization's goals? Or do you have somebody who is a problem solver likes getting things precise, likes process. Can they be involved in setting processes and standards for other people and tapping into that personal motivator to again, energize themselves, but better the larger organization? With all three ways that we can have fun at work, I hope 
that you all can leave here today not only embracing the idea of having fun at work, but leveraging the power that having fun at work can carry. Thank you.